Hi, this is Natalie. Thank you for listening to Crossroads Church, where we are bringing a real God to real people. I believe you'll be inspired by today's message. Uh, We are continuing a series on honor that we began last week. Uh, If you weren't here, let me just simplify the definition and what we're using um, as a definition for honor, which I think will... Um, makes sense here in just a little bit. But basically the word honor, when you take a look at all the different categories, you can look at all the dictionaries, you can look at all the Greek texts, and basically what it amounts to, it's a valuing. I value, I value something, to value something. Scripture has a whole lot to say about what we value. We're to value, obviously, one another, respect one another, right? We're to value our parents, we're to honor our parents. Am I right, students? One student said that. We're to honor God's word. We're to honor God's word. We're to honor elders. We're to honor those who are in authority, who are ministering God's word. As a matter of fact, the scripture talks about giving double honor to individuals. We're all to honor those who are in authority. The scripture has a lot to say about honor. And uh, we're taking a look at that topic and just kind of running deep in, um, yay, let there be light. Uh, but today, I, I want to give you something that I think, here, here's, here's what I'm going to do, is give you something that settles me. Um, you know, whenever we face things like we're facing, uh, things that, you know, you got decisions to make, uh, people and news and media and friends and politics, they're constantly pulling you. Students, you're going to go into college, you're going to go back into school, and there's a pull that's constantly going on. Uh, and you'll find yourself among friends, and as you are walking with them, you realize, like, man, that's probably not the crowd I need to be with uh, because I was brought a different way, and I need to honor and respect my parents and their wishes, and uh, so you'll make this decisions. And, and as adults, that never stops, does it? We find ourselves in different places with different people. We find ourselves watching news. We find ourselves looking at our country, looking at our climate, and uh, people which were being pulled one way or another. And it's very easy for us to get lost in the maze. It's very easy to get lost with all the rhetoric and all the, in this cloud, especially when things like COVID-19 um, you know, are, are hitting us right here in our city, in our community. People that we know, friends, are either sick or dying or have died. Police officers just died down in McAllen earlier, a few hours ago. And so we, we wonder and we, we're, we're trying to navigate through these troubled waters. And uh, I don't know about you, but I have found myself in conflict, touring on the inside. And uh, I'm wondering, like, what decisions do I make? And, and I'm, you know, because most of us are, are people pleasers. Uh, sometimes we're like, man, if we do this, then these people are gonna get upset. And if we make this decision, this is what's going to happen with my other relationships. And we're in conflict. But this morning, I want to settle all that and help you to honor something that's more important than anything that you'll find on this earth. It's eternal. It's a perspective from heaven. We're to honor, if anything, honor God's word above anything else than you hear that goes contrary to his values and his system. Amen? One amen. You get it. If there's anything that settles me in my heart whenever I'm troubled and I'm wondering, man, what's the right decision to make? I have to step back and realize and recognize, okay, God, who am I and what am I here for? Why am I on this earth? To make some cash? To have a Corvette? A Hummer? Yes. Yes. To have a fine wife, a husband with a six pack, or a keg? Why am I here? And there's decisions that we're making and all of a sudden when I'm in the middle of the chaos, finally something settles me and it's his word and his reason for me being here on this earth. And when that settles me, it's disregard to even my physical, 
longevity here on this earth in a sense. In other words, I'm willing to die for what he died for me for. And all of a sudden the fear begins to lift and my purpose becomes so sharp and I'll rise up and be the confident man that God has called me to be regardless and in spite of what anything or anyone is saying around me. Whether they disagree or not, I know I'm in agreement and I'm honoring him. And if there's anything that I want you to take home today, it's that right there. Because I know that you're facing crazy stuff and you're looking for direction and you're looking for answers and you're wondering, well, is this the end of the world? And you're wondering, man, I wonder what's gonna happen to, to mom or to uncle or, or what, why did this happen to us? And I want, you to, I want you to be settled today before you walk or when you walk out of these doors that there's a higher purpose, that you might be looking at something that, yes, it's affecting you, but it's, it's temporary and it's, and, it's, and it's here on this earth, but there's something that's eternal that I want you to get your gaze on. And it's honoring God's word above anything else. Amen? And I know we talked about that, and I know it's a simple message, and I can go home right now and just say, amen, let's just sing another song and close. But Jesus faced a very similar situation when he was here on this earth. Um, he was right in the middle of a great divide also. He was right in the middle of uh, a, a middle of a, a pandemic, so to speak. There's a racial divide. There's a cultural divide. His disciples were divided. But he was focused. And he did something that I want to share with you today from John's Gospel, the 17th chapter. He prayed a prayer. And he prayed for you. And he prayed for me. And he prayed for this generation. And he goes, hey, in the middle of all this, I see what's ahead. And if you just hold on and remind yourself of what I prayed for and remember why I prayed this, the reason why I prayed this, you can be settled in the middle of what we're facing today. But before we get into that, I have to ask you a question. It's a very simple question. It's a pointed question, but it's really gonna challenge your beliefs. It's really gonna challenge whether or not you're really a true follower of Jesus, okay? How many guys can agree that we are in a nation that's divided right now, right? I mean, COVID-19 has divided all of us. Wear a mask, some don't wear a mask. Go to church, some don't sing in church, some do sing in church. You're not supposed to hug, oh, it doesn't matter, hug anybody. There's a COVID divide that's taking place. People are wondering whether or not to take that hydroxychlorine or whatever that is, or like my grandma just says, mijo, just take Vicks and Sprite. You'll be okay. <laughs> I don't even know what the hydroxychloride is. It, you know, it's like Comet or something. I don't know what it is. But Vicks and Sprite have done well for me. There's a racial divide after the murder of, death, of Floyd, George Floyd, there's protests that are happening right now, even today, in the you know, riots, turning into children being shot. A great divide among parents. Black Lives Matter movement is taking place. And most people don't even know what that is. Well, don't white lives matter? Don't Mexican lives matter? Well, yeah. But all lives matter, but that's not the issue that's at hand right now. And so they're making a statement. I got a lot of black brothers, four of my elders are, are black. And I had to sit down with them and talk to them. And I was so glad I did because I saw a perspective that I never saw before. And I, I thought I was close to them and I am close to them, but little did I know what they actually were, how they were living and what was going on in their lives. And it caused great empathy in my heart towards them there's anything that came out of that conversation was a love and a respect for people of other races. There are American history right before us. There are statues that are being torn down in the name of freedom. The Republicans are right. The Democrats are right. You know, Bernie's right. I don't know who's right. And there's just a kind, all kinds, and the church is right in the middle of it all being threatened. And what I love about this church that I look around the room 
and I see black, and I see white, and I see Hispanic, and I see Asian, and I see every other color, every other race, all these things, we're all coming under one name, and it's not a Democratic name or a Republican name, it's, it's the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's the beauty of it. And you know what? Jesus saw that too. And because Jesus saw that, he recognized that, wait, listen, guys, this is way bigger, way larger than you can ever, ever imagine. Therefore, what he prayed and what, why he prayed it is so vitally important this morning. And we just got to look at it real briefly and share some things uh, here this morning. Is that all right? And um, I want you to understand this question that I'm going to challenge you with is this. Are you willing, you can put that up. Are you willing to evaluate your politics, your beliefs? You can, the only reason I put politics up here is because anytime you, you, you watch the news, whether it's COVID or whatever it is, it's always connected to a party. You know what I'm saying? Trump did this. No, you know, it's, just, it's crazy. And so that's the reason why I'm here. I usually stay away from politics, but when the teachings of Jesus intersect uh, with what's, what, what, what this world is struggling with, I've got an opportunity to say something. And I'm so glad I can talk about politics today. And so whenever you're really willing to do this, we're not talking about just casually do this. Oh, I, you know, I, 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 I agree, I disagree, I agree to disagree. I, I you know, I, I value diversity. But are you willing to live this way? This challenges our Christianity. To, to, to look at your situation, to look at even this in the, through the filter of your faith and lay aside some of these things. <clears throat> in other words, in the simple terms, are you willing to follow Jesus? Because Jesus himself, in his time, he also, you'll see that he disagreed with the politics or the rhetoric of that day but yet he still loved unconditionally. And you and I can still do the same. We just have to find the inner strength that only comes by God's spirit to do that in the same manner, rather than just stay divided and to say, you know what? You believe your way, I believe my way, just get out of my way. We see a lot of that happening. <clears throat> it's quiet in this Presbyterian church. John 17 is where we're gonna begin. This is right after the Passover meal, right after Jesus has a meal with the disciples and he takes a towel and he begins to serve them. You remember that? And then he says, listen, I want you to do something. I'm doing this as an example so that you can do the same because I'm about to leave here and you're gonna have to carry this message on and you're gonna face all kinds of opposition. You're gonna be bloodied up. You're gonna be massacred. You're gonna be, you know, you're gonna be hurt. And this is like year three already. And some of you are gonna die for this, for my sake. And I'm sure some of the disciples were thinking like, man, I wish you'd have told me year one. Maybe I'd have, you know, made a different decision. He serves them. And he says, I'm giving you an example to do to others what I have done to you. You have to remember that Jesus was the most powerful person in that room. He, was, he knew where he was going. He knew where he came from. And he had all authority. And he was the man in authority. And what did he do with, when you're the most powerful person in the room, what do you do with that? How do you leverage your power? How do you leverage your influence? If you're the dad in the home, how do you leverage your authority? Well, Jesus gave us, gave us an example. He got on his knees and he served others in the middle of it. And I love this prayer. So we're gonna go right here in John 17. It's a simple, simple prayer. And it goes like this, John 17, one. Father, Jesus spoke these words. He lifted up his eyes to heaven. And he said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son. In other words, put a, shine a light upon me just expose this for who I am. Expose me for who I am and let people see who I really am and what I'm really about. Pour that light upon me. He says, glorify your son that your son may glorify you. 
Lift me up in such a way that people will recognize me and why I'm here, why I came on this earth. The hour has come, he said. And the hour that he's talking about is the hour that's about to take place. It's not, it's, it, it's, the, it's the place where he would be the most glorified. And the most glorified moment in his life is not a happy moment. It's not when he's feeding 5,000. It's not when there's miracles all around. The most glorified moment in the life of Jesus was when there's panic and fear and horror all around him. It was a cross. He says, glorify me in this hour. Glorify your son that your son may also glorify you. But notice how he prays. He says, I have a prayer request, God. I'm gonna remain here Go to the next one real quick. Now that I'm no longer in this world, but these are in the world, I'm, I'm coming to you. In other words, I'm about to leave. I'm about to be gone. Go ahead and go on to the next one. Holy Father, here's what I, I'm asking you. Here's the prayer request. Lord, I'm, I'm asking you for something. I'm asking you to protect them. He's talking about the 12 disciples, right? He says, protect them, protect them. Why does he want protection? because he knows what's ahead. What is he wanting to protect? Well, we know that he's not talking about physical protection because he just told them a little while ago that they're fixing to be arrested and bloodied up and some of them are gonna die. So he's not talking about protecting their physical body. There's something deeper that we need to look at ourselves also and say, what's the most valuable thing that we have on this earth that God has given to us? Is it our physical substance? He says, protect them by the power of your name. The name that you gave me so that, stop right there, don't do it, don't change it. Here's that word so that gives us the purpose and the reason why he's asking uh, our heavenly father to protect. Again, it's not, it's not the reasons that we think we need to be protected. You know, we pray prayers. And uh, the prayers that we pray are sometimes the exact opposite of what Jesus prays. And this morning, I hope my eyes and our eyes will enlighten up so that we begin to see the things that were most concerning to Jesus are the things that should be the most concerning to us. And if that's the case, then we would begin to pray the same things that Jesus was praying in this moment and in this hour. Because what I'm finding out in my own life, and I'm convicted, what I'm finding out in the life of others that I'm around, that the prayers that we're praying today are not necessarily the same things that Jesus was praying in the middle of diversity, in the middle of chaos, in the middle of horror. He's saying, protect them. The, by the power of your name, the name that you gave me, so that, one reason, go ahead, go, that they may be one as we are one. He says, protect them so that we could become one. That was the prayer request for the first century followers. Oh, I can't do that. <clears throat> so that they could become united. In other words, Unity and oneness, listen students, you know this is what happens in your school. When your school and your classroom is divided, parents, when your household is divided, it is chaos, isn't it? You can't get anything done. No peace, no peace in the home. If wife ain't happy, nobody's happy. Students, if your parents ain't happy, nobody's happy. It's miserable, isn't it? The importance of unity is, well, think about the church as a whole. This is what he's praying for, to protect the unity, to protect the oneness of the first century followers. Jesus knew more importantly than any physical protection was unity, that we could just, if they could, God, if they could just stick together because they're about to face something chaotic, something they've never faced before. But if they could just hold on, hold fast together, if they could just stick together, it's possible that a world could possibly change in the middle of 
all the chaos and all the nonsense. But if division sets in, if they become disunified, if they, if they start you know, challenging each other and just going their separate ways, guess what? What I've came to this earth for, it would still be in effect, but it can't be demonstrated because people will see what you're a Christian, but everybody's doing their own thing. So he's asking them to protect this unity. Otherwise, the movement that they were about to be a part of, these Jesus followers that were going to go and minister this gospel message, it would stall out and you and I wouldn't be here with resurrection power on the inside. And then he goes on, after that he goes, I not only pray, my prayer is not only for them, those 12, but I'm also praying for those who will believe. He looks ahead. He looks to the next generation. He looks to the following generation all the way up to today. He's praying for you and he's praying for me. He says, I'm not only praying for them, God, I'm praying for those who will believe in me through their message, right? All of them, he says, all of them. First century, he's talking about the diversity then the Jews and the Romans and the Samaritans and the women and the slave and the freemen and the tax collectors and the educated and the wealthy and the poor. There was some great diversity back then. He goes, I'm praying for all of them who will believe. If you bring it down to our particular uh, place right now in our 21st century, he's talking about the black and the white and the brown and the rich and the middle and the single and the married and the Republican and the Democrat and the independent and the indecisive. He's praying for every single one of us. And what is he praying for? Again, that they may be one, that all of them would become one just as you, Father, in me and I in you, may they also be in us so that another reason why He's saying, here's another purpose, so that what? So that the world, see, we think it's about us. The reason why he's asking to protect the unity of the church, the reason why he's asking us to, to, to ask the Father to protect this, this oneness is not for our physical protection. It's not for anything that has to do with us. It's for others. It's so that the world may believe that perhaps... The world can see a, a, a classroom or a church or a city that's all divided. They come from all different types of background, but yet they're one, they have one purpose and they're moving in the same direction. Because if they can see that, perhaps they might have an opportunity to believe and see who exactly their heavenly father is. I don't know if that makes sense or not, but that's why I'm here. And that's why you're here. And when I, when I just zone in and just lock in to my purpose and why I'm on this platform this morning, I don't care what disease is out there. I don't care what virus is out there. And I don't care what division is out there. And I don't care who's in the office of presidency. It doesn't matter if Hillary wins or Bernie wins or Trump wins again. All I know is that I know why I'm here. And if I'm here, and this is my purpose, and this is my mandate, I'm praying that we would stay united, that we would be so full of Christ, that we would so follow him, that when people see us, they see my father, and they see my father's love, and they see that, hey, listen, there's a bigger reason why we're on this earth. They would see him as he truly is. Amen. I love this passage. He goes on to say right here in verse 22 in John 17, he goes, I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one. He goes, I've given them, all of us, he's given everything that we need is available to us in Christ Jesus. That's why Kim sang that song. And that's why we were, we were talking about that and speaking that over. It's just a reminder of who we really are in Jesus. He goes, I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one even as we are one, I in them, you in me, so that they may be brought into complete, complete unity. Man, it is so powerful. Imagine that. Is that impossible? It seems like that would be impossible, but it's not according to God, the, the prayer that Jesus prayed. We're not talking about political unity. We're not talking about protesting with unity. We're not talking about, we're talking about unity of purpose. 
after the resurrection, the church launched and they had one message. And they had one reason why they preached this message because we were gonna give you an opportunity for those who don't know him, an on-ramp to the Father so that you could become united with him. Because I don't know if you know this or not, many of you do, but there was a separation that took place. Our sin separated us from a holy God. And there was absolutely no way that that bridge could, that gap could ever be bridged, except a sacrifice had to be made. And Jesus was that sacrifice. Therefore, he bridged that gap. And now we have access to our heavenly father so we can spend eternity with him. We can live free on the inside, free conscious. We can have freedom on the inside and just live in such a way that's pleasing to our heavenly father. And he says, man, that's the message that, of, of, that we need to give to people. He's talking about unity. It's mission critical, Crossroads Church, that you and I remained united in this season of our lives so that the world may know that you sent me and I have loved them even as you have loved me. And you and I have to strive for, we have to fight for. Listen, church, you're gonna be around people that have different views, different perspectives, different political views. You're gonna have, you know, you're already around those kind of folks. You look at the news and it's constantly just vomiting fear all over you. But you and I have a perspective that comes from heaven, that if we just hold on to that perspective, it will settle your heart and it'll give you peace and it'll give you a reason of why you exist. Hey, listen, remember, in the middle of all this stuff that you're facing, I'm facing it too. And what settles me and what's gonna settle you is that we stay united and we remind ourselves of the reason why we're here. Parents, when all hell's breaking loose in your own house, gather your children, gather your spouse, and just begin to rally around that moment and begin to pray, say, hey, listen, I don't have a job anymore and I don't know where we're gonna get the next food, but here's what I do know, that God knows and he is our God and he's our provider and he's our healer and it won't touch us, but we're gonna find out God's gonna make a way, he's gonna part the way right in the middle of this if we, if we just keep our perspective and keep our focus on him. And this is all we have here on this earth. And you watch, you watch God's hand, you watch God's hand move in such a way that'll just blow your mind. When we honored God's word, and we stood up for the king, the king stood up for us. And he always provided. He always made provision about. It. He always gave us a word in season. He always took us to the next place. And guess what? You don't look at me. I'm not skinny. I'm you know, he he's always fed me. And he'll do the same for you. There's no need to fear. He's way maker. He's miracle worker. He's mighty God. He's the God that's more than enough. He owns all the cattle on a thousand hills. And guess what? He's your savior. He's your God. He's your father. He's your father. Do not fear. Only believe. Only believe. Amen. Let's all stand real quick. You are here. Moving in the midst. Worship you, worship you. You are here, moving in this place. If you have those words, put them on the screen, okay? Worship you, it's Waymaker. Worship you, yes. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper. If you are ever in the Seguin area, come visit us on Sunday mornings at 9 or 11 a.m. Or you can just download our app and receive our weekly messages right to your phone. Just text CC Seguin to 77977 and click on the link that you receive. May the remainder of your week be enriched with God's favor and blessings.